This is Dr. Saad in front of you and as we have discussed in previous lecture about the malabsorption syndrome uh, and the first we discussed was the celiac disease. Now today we are going to discuss the uh, Whipple disease and the lactose intolerance. They are also the malabsorption syndrome. So first of all we are going to discuss the Whipple's disease. Whipple's disease. Now what is Whipple's disease? Basically, Whipple's disease is a systemic infectious disease that is, that is basically it can affect all the systems of the body. It is a multi-system disease, can affect all the systems of the body, but most commonly it affects the intestine, it affects the CNS and the musculoskeletal system. So it is a multi-system or multi-organ disease that can affect any organ of your body but most commonly it affects the intestine about 75% of the cases then it can affect the musculoskeletal system in about 60 to 65 percent of the cases and it affects also the CNS it is 10 percent of the cases while other systems like the cardiac pulmonary lymph nodes they are also involved but they are less commonly involved clear so this is a multi-system disease infectious disease now what is the infectious agent causing this whipple disease it is basically trough arima whipple clear so whatever you can pronounce it but it is the trough arima whipple this is the infectious agent that is causing the this whipple's disease now this whipple's disease is basically more common in the farmers clear this is more common in the farmers because this tropo, uh, tro trophoa arima whipple this basically it is found mainly in the soil areas so that's why it is found in the farmers more commonly and this is also more common in the male this is a male dominant disease it is more common in the males about 40 to 50 years males while we have studied that the celiac disease was more common in the females but this whipple disease is more common in the males it is more common in the farmers and because the tropa uh, trophy arima whipple is found more commonly in the soil so this is a brief introduction now we are moving on that how this affects the in, involve the different systems of your body basically this trophy arima whipple it enters into your body and moves into the intestine and basically these are your villi for suppose these are your villi basically what happens that this trophy arima whipple this lives in the macrophages of the small intestinal mucosa clear so this in involves the macrophages and here it enters into the macrophages of the small intestinal mucosa so whenever when they enter into the macrophages so the macrophagic structure become distorted it becomes enlarged you can say this macrophage now it has become enlarged when this macrophage is enlarged so obviously this is this is present in the small intestinal villi these are the villi so when they this uh, this you can say macrophage is enlarged so the function of the villi will also be affected because the villi function because obviously this is enlarged here the macrophage is enlarged so this villi the function is uh, affected the lymphatic drainage is obstructed due to this enlargement and that's why the absorption is also affected clear in this way this uh, uh, the trophyma whipple this results in the malabsorption this is the whole you can say mechanism or pathophysiology that it enters the macrophages causes the distortion of macrophage enlargement of macrophage this causes the lymphatic obstruction and this leads to the defective absorption of the substances due to which there is no absorption and the malabsorption occurs so in the intestine first of all we have the intestinal features okay here i am writing we have the intestinal features obviously the patient will be having diarrhea patient will also be having steatoria because fat is not absorbed patient will be having protein losing enteropathy 
clear so these are your intestinal features patient obviously when these all malabsorption syndromes are occurring malabsorption is there patient will also be having the weight loss clear so these are the intestinal features of the whipple's disease now we are moving to the musculoskeletal system basically what happens that this uh, affects the joints basically large joint arthropathy it causes large joint arthropathy like the sacroiliitis clear so this is one thing important regarding this musculoskeletal system that this is most often the initial presentation most often the initial presentation basically the patient may present initially to you with this complaint like the complaint of the joint involvement large joint involvement clear the patient may complain that he is having a back pain a farmer that comes to you complaining of the back pain and then he develop also diarrhea he is also having weakness he is also having weight loss all these features are also there so this initial presentation of the joint involvement may confuse you and may confuse your diagnosis you may move towards the rheumatology that this may be a joint disease but after joint involvement when he is complaining of the intestinal involvement diarrhea steatorrhea all these uh, means features weight loss so then your means your diagnosis must be pointing towards the whipple's disease this is a very important and very confusing diagnosis means most of us, uh, most of us are confused in this diagnosis that initial presentation is joint involvement then after that we have the diarrhea then it can also involve the cns cns like the cranial nerve palsy is maybe there in the patient and there is a feature a specific feature that is called as the oculo masticatory myorrhythmias now what is this oculo masticatory myorrhythmia this is very simple it is indicating itself oculo oculo means eyes masticatory means the muscles of mastication myorrhythmias means the involuntary movements so now what is this basically in this in this condition when the cns involvement is there so ocular mastigatory myorrhythmia as in which occur in which what happens that your there is nystagmus of the eyes means eyes they move involuntarily clear and the face the mouth of the person it also the muscles of mastication basically it moves involuntarily means the patient continuously is moving his muscles and the eyes are also moving they are involuntary it is not control uh, it is not in the control of the patient it is just involuntary this movement occurs continuously of the jaw like this movement is occurring clear and the eyes uh, and nystagmus is also present the eyes movement is also there clear so this is called as ocular mastigatory myorrhythmias then we also have the cardiac involvement like the pericarditis myocarditis endocarditis pulmonary involvement may lead to the cough and infiltrates may also be there lymph nodes having means lymphadenopathy can also be there fever can also be there to the patient so these are the multi system involvement but most commonly i told you that these three systems are involved and their features are these are the features of them clear now after this we are moving that how we can diagnose this disease what is the diagnosis of this disease so what are you going to do the investigation investigation is gold standard that is the endoscopic biopsy endoscopic biopsy is the gold standard and what you will find an endoscopic biopsy first of all we have the villus atrophy and blunting but one thing here to be mentioned that this villus atrophy in the blunting was also in the celiac disease then what is the difference between the endoscopic biopsy of this and the celiac disease so one more feature is very important in the uh, whipple's disease that is the hallmark hallmark on the endoscopic biopsy that is basically the distended macrophages distended macrophages in the small intestinal mucosa 
As I told you the pathophysiology of this, here I told you that this is basically villi, these are the macrophages, they enter into them and they cause the distortion or distension of the macrophages. So same, this distension can be seen on the endoscopic biopsy and this is the hallmark of this Whipple's disease, that the distended macrophages in the small intestinal mucosa, this is the hallmark of the endoscopic biopsy. This is the differentiating feature between the celiac disease and the Whipple's disease, endoscopic biopsy, on the endoscopic biopsy. Then basically what is the treatment for this? Treatment is also very simple. But remember this thing, treatment is very necessary, very important. Without treatment, patient may die. Clear? So treatment is IV ceftrioxone. First of all, you will give the patient IV ceftrioxone for two weeks. Then after that, you will be shifting to the patient on the cortriamoxazole. For at least one year. This is basically oral. You are giving oral to co uh, for at least one year, and firstly, you are giving the IV ceftriaxone for the two weeks. So, this is the basically uh, treatment of the Whipple's disease, and this we have discussed uh, detail all about the Whipple's disease that what is how you will diagnose this how you will uh, investigate this, how you will treat the Whipple's disease. Basically, this is very confusing disease. So just uh, if, the, if there is a patient who is coming to you with the uh, joint involvement, first of all, then he is complaining of the diarrhea and the weight loss and weakness, then you must go for the endoscopic biopsy. The MCQs that comes to you, comes in your paper is like that. The whole scenario is given of the Whipple's disease, clear? And they are asking what is your investigation of choice. So many of you confused in that, that the joint involvement is there and the diarrhea is there. So what will be the investigation of choice? So most of them, they are doing the X-ray, MRI and the joint aspiration. No, you have to diagnose first. So your diagnosis would be Whipple disease. And then remember that what is the investigation of choice for Whipple disease? Endoscopic biopsy. So the correct option would be endoscopic biopsy. Now we are quickly doing the lactose intolerance. The next uh, uh, you can say malabsorption syndrome that is the lactose intolerance this is also very easy lactose intolerance so now we are going to do the lactose intolerance lactose intolerance as its name indicate lactose intolerance that the patient is intolerant to lactose he cannot take lactose and why he cannot take lactose because he is having a deficiency of enzyme called as the lactase what is the function of lactase it basically converts the lactose to glucose and galactose this you have studied in your biochemistry many times that the lactase is the enzyme that is converting the lactose to the glucose and galactose. So the deficiency of this enzyme occur in these patients and this deficiency it may be primary. Primary means that it may be genetic deficiency in the patient. It may be secondary. Secondary means due to any other disease, any disease like the celiac disease may also result in the uh, lactose intolerance clear now the patient how the patient will be presenting to you patient will be presenting to you with the diarrhea that would be watery diarrhea clear this would be watery diarrhea and this is osmotic diarrhea now what is osmotic diarrhea simple is that osmotic diarrhea means that this is for example the lumen clear and here basically your solutes are present osmotic diarrhea means whenever it is dependent upon the solutes whenever the solutes are present in the in this area in the intestine in the lumen of the intestine so this this solutes they cause the absorption of the water and in this way it results in the watery diarrhea now how this occur in the lactose intolerance basically simple is that if the patient is taking taking the for example carbohydrate lactose from the mouth here it is taken, it is moving to the intestine and now as the patient is having the deficiency of the lactase, so the lactose cannot be broken down and when the lactose cannot be broken down into the glucose and galactose, so that will not be absorbed because the galactose cannot be absorbed. 
so the lactose remain in the lumen when the lactose remain in the lumen so the water from here will be attracted towards the solute you all know already that the water always attract towards the solute so the solute is present in the lumen and this is basically lactose so lactose will be causing the absorption of water so more and more water will be absorbed and this lactose along with water will be causing the watery diarrhea in the patient and this is called as the osmotic diarrhea because this is solute dependent this is lactose dependent now one thing or one more feature is there that this diarrhea decreases with fasting this is also very logical point that simple is that when the lactose won't be there for example now lactose is not there water won't be absorbed because the patient is fasting and he is having he has taken nothing he has taken he has not taken the lactose even so what happens that the water won't be there uh, water won't be absorbed lactose is not there water won't be absorbed there will be no watery diarrhea so that's why always the osmotic diarrhea always the osmotic diarrhea they decreases with the fasting clear because they are solute dependent when there will be no solute no watery diarrhea clear and this may this will uh, the patient will not complain weight loss so there will be no weight loss there will be no uh, vitamin deficiencies clear so the patient will be having only the watery diarrhea that will be dependent upon the solutes when the patient is fasting the diarrhea will be decreased clear so this is now how you will uh, investigate this lactose intolerance simple is that investigation is the hydrogen breath test is there this is also used in the uh, bacterial overgrowth syndrome clear uh, whole procedure is that um, uh, there is a bag is attached to the mouth of the patient and he is asked to breathe out and then you can you will see the substances present in that gas so just don't you don't need to go in the detail of this test just uh, remember that this is the hydrogen breath test this is it is used for this lactose intolerance as well as the bacterial overgrowth syndrome and then you can also give the patient lactose free diet and check him that either he is responding to lactose free diet or not if he is responding it means that he is having lactose intolerance and the treatment is also very simple same treatment is there you are giving the lactose free diet to the patient clear or there is a basically um, in the market there are certain lactase enzymes are also there that are also given to the patient so that he can digest the lactose lactose can be converted to the glucose and galactose by the enzyme lactase you are giving from the outside clear so this is the second we have convert uh, done the malabsorption syndrome today we have done the whipple syndrome and whipple disease and the lactose intolerance now are two more syndromes malabsorption syndrome that are remaining and we will do that in our next lecture if you have any query any confusion you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz